so guys uh, rahul uh, actually uh, is a senior design engineer at tenstorrent uh, and he is working as an artil engineer he has worked as cpu design engineer at arm in his previous role and he had actually there is one interesting fact he has been running i don't know uh, rahul whether you started or someone else started but there is a hashtag on linkedin 100 days of rtl he actually has been doing that and i've seen a lot of people have now started following it so yeah. he's the right person to talk about rtl design <laughs> uh, but rahul did you start it or someone else started no i only initiated it yeah okay yeah mm -hmm. and i guess uh, there are thousands of posts around that now right right that yeah time. yeah so i see a lot of college students trying it out and i think most of the people who are in fourth year right if they want mm -hmm. to get some attention they start doing this which is good right so which yeah, yeah basically they are getting noticed and 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 it's not that doesn't they are right. actually writing some codes around it right exactly that's what yeah so you can, so you also like people who are on this call you can also use that hashtag and post your rtl designs which you have been working on and it does help like uh, if you're in college or if you're doing a recruiters nowadays do notice these things as well right so rahul uh, yeah why don't you talk about little bit about yourself from uh, sure. uh, mm -hmm. your side and then i have a few questions and if uh, students and learners have few questions to ask you I'll let them ask sounds yeah. sounds good yeah so i was initially planning to you know prepare a ppt and go through it but then i ditched the whole idea saying that no let's keep it hands on and uh, it'll be good to you know just have a discussion about what is rtl design and uh, why is it necessary um, uh, and i also wanted to talk about my own journey uh, about you know uh, so let me first introduce myself so i uh recently completed about seven and a half to eight years in semiconductor industry and uh, uh, throughout those eight years i've always you know worked across either as a verification engineer or as a rtl design engineer so i started my career uh, right out of college getting uh, uh, you know a job opportunity at arm as a verification engineer and there i spent like six six and a half years working there Uh, out of those six and a half years, I spent like three and a half years working as a verification engineer, um, and uh, then I spent like six to eight months working as a again as a verification engineer, but uh, into formal techniques, mm -hmm. uh, and then I switched into RTL design. Um, but throughout those six six and a half years, I've always worked. on cpus so most of my experience has been in and around cpu ip uh, which is basically a heart of you know almost every ip out there either people buy a cpu and then make their ips around it or you know, these days with the rise of open source and risk 5 a lot of companies are actually designing their own cpus so which means that knowing about cpus is essential and i was you know back when i joined i had no idea what cpu is i just knew that okay it's just just you know fetch decode execute blah blah but once i started working into it i realized it's a lot more which goes into it and uh, slowly i then started realizing the importance of knowing uh, why Uh, a cpu ip is important because it plays a big role in almost every uh, design which you would either be verifying or designing it so it will be interacting with cpu at some stage or the other or some of your interfaces would be dominated saying that because the cpu does this we have to do it this way so uh, that is what it is then um, like once i moved into design i started doing small things and uh, uh, because obviously it was a lateral shift uh, and uh, you know uh, it's always challenging whenever you are at like 3 to 4 years into your uh, experience and then you take a completely switch from whatever you've been doing for the last 4 years and move into something new uh, so but i was lucky enough i got good mentors and uh, they really helped me learn about the uh, the tricks of the trade i would say because uh, rtl design a lot of things are actually you know you get to learn about it when doing it on the job and not a lot of it is clear by just reading theory and getting mm -hmm. the theoretical concepts uh, now which is you know i also personally believe that a lot like for uh, semiconductors like people who are working in the uh, front end uh, part of the industry uh, 
they should always learn by doing it and uh, i think you know the program currently which vikas is running that actually ensures that so which is a very good thing and uh, uh, because i personally have learned a lot of it by making mistakes fixing it debugging it and then realizing oh that's what this particular line in the spec meant so 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 that's that's uh, where i you know started off with rtl design doing small small designs and then slowly getting into the the main cpu pipeline at arm uh, which is when i actually you know decided that i really want to learn more and mm -hmm. uh, the opportunities at arm they seemed to be they were very good but the only problem with that was that most of it came with the uh, you know legacy ip baggage and what mm -hmm. i mean by that is that uh, whatever project you would you know move into all the people would say it's a new project but it will never be done from scratch it will always have some some you know old ip or legacy ip which someone would have designed in the early 90s or 2000s and stuff like that you would use that as a base and then try to build on top of it but i wanted to do it right from scratch and i wanted to be part of an organization you know where things they start off with pen and paper have a design there and then start working towards writing the rtl writing the test benches getting all of the different flows together and then getting towards the product which is why i started looking out for startups and i was lucky to find 10 store and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they were they were hiring rtl design engineers in india uh, it met all of the criteria because it was a risk five based startup working in designing a completely new cpu from scratch and uh, they were also giving uh, work from home at that point so that's what i wanted uh, i switched to that uh, i was lucky to clear, clear the interview rounds and stuff like that and that's where right now i am uh, when i joined tenstorrent uh, you know they were like for the entire cpu they just had like 10 rtl files and nothing was working at that point there were no test benches and nothing uh, and i have recently completed a year here here and we have now like gotten most of the uh, functional features ready which you know within this one year i actually feel that i've learned more than what i have learned in the past six years at arm although those were my foundational years i wouldn't discount that because those were very important too but you know the kind of learning i had here by doing things from scratch and you know getting everything ready uh, by writing rtl code or discussing it with different people like how this is supposed to work what will be the performance impacts and stuff like that uh, all of that happened uh, here in one year at a very break and next speak because at arm you know things were um, they were done at a everything was planned so i need not to worry that uh, i will miss some deadline or nothing that, that will never happen because i was given enough time for even a single line change but here at 10 torrent they wanted like if we are discussing it today they wanted it to be done by tomorrow obviously that was initially some pressure and stuff like that but that also meant that even after spending like six seven years there were tons of things which i was learning almost on every day which is why i used to look forward to you know getting up on monday morning and then starting my work at uh, uh, ten store because it was a great learning opportunity and I always every day was something new so th yeah that's where I am right now and uh, I'll, I'll pause here yeah, so mm -hmm. so uh, Rahul I wanted to ask so like how how big a role the art writing RTL part uh, pl plays mm -hmm. like it, talking about ten store and how important is mm -hmm. the role of the RTL designer in like for a semiconductor company, especially since you're working at 10 students. Right. Want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So I will first take a step back and, you know, quickly discuss about like what are, what are the steps which mm -hmm. usually, um, you know, most of the companies follow when they want to do something new. Uh, so in my experience, uh, I have seen that people, they usually start off by architectural specs. So let's take an example of a RISC-V CPU. Let's say that today you want to design a RISC-V CPU. The first thing what you would do is that you would, you know, read about what um, is needed to build a risk 5 cpu and that is mostly given by some architectural spec so in your case like if you're working in a different company around an soc if you want to have a new ip design there so then there will be the architect who would come up and says that these are the different requirements which this particular spec should meet so these are the first things which you would go and you would 
read about it so once you go through and read about it you will you know list down things that okay you need to support let's say 10 instructions add subtract multiply which means that if you look at your cpu at a micro architecture level you need an adder you need a subtractor you need a multiplier and stuff like that plus you need some forwarding paths and things like that so you would start going into finer details of a micro architecture and by the term micro architecture what i mean is that looking at the specifications you would try to come up with a hardware which describes how those different specifications would work and uh, once you have the micro so this is where the rtl guys also play a role right so even when i am today like designing something new like for example i recently added uh, the tlb into the cpu which i was working at so before adding the tlb i just did not go and you know coded it up that that's not how it works i first designed the micro architecture that how does a tlb miss happens what happens when you get a tlb hit which cycle you know you get a hit which cycle the data is available if you have a miss then what happens to the pipeline do you stall or do you prefetch things like that so once all of that is sorted out and you have some idea that okay this is what i want to do then you move on to you know writing actual very log rtl code or whatever system very log rtl code would. so these days i think every company has switched to system very log so i'll stick towards that and dependent upon like what hardware features you want you start describing that into system very log and this you know will meet your functional requirements in a way that okay you needed a tlb you coded a tlb this works this helps but as a side uh, which you have to also you know take care of is the uh, power performance and area aspects so when you are writing the rtl you have to be very constant that whether the thing which you are trying to do in one cycle whether it is physically possible to do it in one cycle or not and uh, that is determined by the levels of logic you have before breaking it with a sequential logic for example you are reading something out from a memory and you want to do some computation on top of it and then write it back into you know another memory so the amount of computations which you can do in that one cycle is is limited by your frequency so for cpus the frequency matters a lot like most of the modern day cpus they are 3 to 5 gigahertz anywhere in between and getting the number the logic to be correct becomes very essential so you might have something which is functionally correct for example a plus b you want to do you did it but it might not meet the frequency target. So you might have to break it down into different chunks. For example, you can do A plus B for four bits in one cycle, but you can't do it for like 32 bits. So, you know, things like that, they also play a very important role because they decide how you would micro-architect your design and how you would actually code it in the Verilog RTL. So this was for timing and then similarly the performance and the area aspects come into picture, which are mostly figured out when you are, uh, uh, you know when you are designing your micro architecture at that point you can actually have a rough estimate as to what is possible in which cycle whether a tlb hit takes one cycle or two cycles you can you know very easily figure out by the size of your tlb how big it is and stuff like that so that's why you know i would say that um, rtl design engineers they start at a very early stage of the project and they are actually active towards the last stage of the projects because getting the coding right is one thing and then you would have the functional teams they were they will start testing it out and you will get bombarded with bugs coming from all over the places which means that you have to fix those then these are the functional bugs which are you know obviously you have to fix you can't uh, say that you won't fix any of the functional issues because that would mean that something is terribly wrong apart from that you would also need to you know pay attention to ppa which means that you have to discuss things with the physical design team and as well as the performance team so which is why you know i like to say that the rtl uh, folks they actually have a wider view of what is happening in almost every aspect of the chip design and at least here in 10 store and i've had this opportunity because i have meetings with all of these different teams and they actually like based on the discussions we finalize like what goes into the rtl and what i end up designing so yeah that was a slightly <laughs> elaborate answer but yeah I, I believe i covered most of the things Thank you.